Yeah, so the first step uh, for our course is to let you know about music instruments in general. Um, you know the course called Network Communication Based, no, Network, ba network, communi network Based Communication network Ecosystems. Based. Network Based Communication <laughs> Ecosystems, exactly, yeah. So our ecosystem is more or less music. Okay, so that's our ecosystem here uh, where there's happening a lot, basically, and uh, we will do some network based stuff in there. We will communicate on various levels, and I will give you a brief introduction now uh, how this communication and even network based communication happens within our music ecosystem or music universe, and in particular, live music. So that's the foundation here. Um, why this is important to talk about uh, digital music instruments? Because of course, network instruments only exist because we can digitally or electronically connect music instruments. Uh, before that, we of course had a lot of communication, or we still have a lot of communication when playing music together, but not on a like wired or wireless electronic basis. First of all, I want to know um, who plays an instrument. Cool. I can skip the other question. So which instrument? I play um, piano and when I'm playing clarinet, okay. uh, so that's my own music, the military music. Ah, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, who did com music with the computer already? I mean, not play music. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody did already play music with the computer, but in terms of making sound, noises, whatever. Potentially, okay. Right. Okay, okay. Great. Um, so you will learn a lot of new stuff. A lot of new stuff. The first question is how and when became using instruments digital. You all know instruments, and you most likely know this instrument, a guitar. In particular, the electric guitar. And the electric guitar, or the guitar, is a very good example to show you how the progression went from analog to digital and even more beyond that throughout history. Our history starts 570 years before Christ in the ancient Greece. So uh, at this time, this gentleman over here, which was Socrates, was among those who started to experiment using strings, gut strings, and um, experimenting with, with separating or dividing the strings and, and analyzing what happens when a string is long, as long like this or when he starts to divide the string uh, and you, if you play guitar or whatever or string instrument or you just use a rubber band for instance then and you bounce it then you hear a sound basically and that's what they started to do by the time basically so they they probably did sound before that time as well but that was the moment when they actually started to systematically use strings to generate sound and to analyze what happens when I yeah, operate with the string. Uh, some years later, ten, in the 10th century actually, in the Middle Age, uh, they started to build this, these instruments, which still have one string only, and this is called monochord. Uh, the big difference was that the monochord has a resonance body. It's the wooden, the wooden uh, box uh, below the string. And as you see here, it has, a, it has some holes. And the idea here was that the hollow body, the wood box, amplifies the sound the string produces. Because when you just uses a, and just use a string like Socrates did, the sound is not very loud, of course. And the idea here is that the, the sound the string produces in here goes into these holes and is somehow captured within the body and is therefore amplified. And of course the, the vibration happening through the, the mount here on both sides as well. So that's the basic idea of amplification, of amplifying a string. Still very analog, very, very simple. 
but uh, it takes another 500 years until the Renaissance, or actually the end of the Renaissance, when luthiers start to build guitar-like lutes, or lutes, like, where they, as you see, different, they use different shapes, they use different numbers of strings, and they, the principle is all the same. It's like with the monochord. You have a hollow body with some holes inside, and you uh, put some strings above the holes to amplify the sound, basically. Um, although, as you know from the guitar, in a very systematic way, so they have different strings here. You see there are kind of like 15 strings, I don't know. Here it's already six strings, here it's four strings, or eight, I don't know. And uh, they are all in a different tune, and you can make more melodic sound as you could do with the monochord, of course. So that was the lute. But still, by the time um, we now go beyond the guitar in the Renaissance, uh, like music was was very big already. Like they played concerts a lot. Yeah, they were the early very famous composers by the time. Uh, were starting to to spread their music all around the world. Orchestras became the violin. The violin was very famous. Um, and for instance. Violin builders or luthiers were were kind of honorable people, like Stradivari. You all know the name, I guess. He built still the, the still famous guitar uh, violins, um, and so that was that was a, a good time for those instrument makers, but not for guitar makers or lute makers, because it was still too too uh, silent. And yeah, you all know from your orchestra when you put like twenty violin players together, it makes a substantial sound, and it's loud. That's, that's what composers want to have, the music louder, that's what musicians want to have, but not the guitar players. That's far too silent. That's why no one really cared about uh, lutes, in fact, uh, or except some Hofnarren at some castles who played there, like Weiger von Vogelweide and so on, yeah, who played for four women and so on. And then we jump uh, into the year 1830. And in this year, this gentleman, who was called, what is his name? Christian Friedrich Martin, yeah, Martin. He emigrated from Saxony, from Germany, to the US. And he was actually an inventor. And what he did was, he said, well, let's use steel strings instead of gut strings. Uh, until that time, strings from all instruments were made of gut. Like the gut is the thing you have in here, and, and you circle that very well tight, then you get a quite a robust string. And from animals, of course, not from humans. Um, so usually, uh, what is it called, ring, uh, pork or or uh, cow gut. That's but as you know, by the time, steel production was quite uh, on the rise, and so they could manage to make strings out of steel. And that gave the guitar a little, quite a push, because from that moment on, it was far louder than with the gut strings. It's still, when you compare classical music, who had, which has uh, plastic strings to a Western guitar, which has steel strings, it's there's quite a, quite a difference in, in terms of noise and loudness. Yeah, and he invented this company, Martin, which still produces guitars, still exists. It's one of the most famous guitars. Uh, and that gave the guitar actually quite a push until the 20s. And the guitar became quite uh, omnipresent in, in orchestras and bands, uh, because obviously you could start to hear the guitar as an instrument within other a group of other instruments or orchestras. And then, uh, with uh, the, let's say, rise of electrification or electricity in the 1920s, another gentleman called Georges de Bougeon, a French uh, gentleman, invented the pickup. And that was the, the, the foundation, the cornerstone of the the, the, like the guitar as the most popular instrument as we know it still today. Um, because the pickup is actually very simple. 
This, these are just four, perma uh, six permanent magnets, small permanent magnets. And around these magnets, uh, there's a, a thin uh, copper wire, like, yeah. what? Coil. Coil, thank you, yeah, coil. So that's the principle, you, you probably remember that from physics uh, in school. That's the principle of, uh, of, a, of a pickup coil, because you put that under the strings here, as you see, and then above every of these magnets is a string, a steel string, and when you, again, vibrate the string, or put it into vibration, then it kind of disturbs the magnetic field of the permanent magnet here. And of course, if you push it harder, then it disturbs it more, and softer than less. And what the coil here does is it's under low voltage, and it amplifies, no, not amplifies, it amplifies it kind of, uh, yeah, it amplifies this, this kind of disturbing uh, string magnet mechanism, basically, and it picks that up, basically. And with electronic means, you can amplify that, that's why you amplifies it. That's the basic principle of the pickup. What is still in this principle in every electric guitar. And from that moment on, the guitar was not even as loud as other instruments, but even louder as instruments. Because you could, the more voltage you use and the more amplification you use, the louder it gets, as we still know. And that was actually in the 1920s, when uh, the guitar also became present. And remember in the 30s, 40s, and even 50s then, the guitar was, is, well, well, became the, the, the most important instrument of, of bands and big bands first in the 20s and 30s and then uh, yeah we all know the the Beatles stories and so on where the guitar was the most important instrument um, yeah and then as soon as the guitar was electrified um, inventors started to play around and developed distortion which is uh, more or less only you over electrify, over amplify a signal so that it starts to crack or starts to to sound distort basically. So actually this is a intentional error I would say uh, in amplification which but even makes the signal louder so as we know from distorted guitars. And then uh, with the whole digital development, the digital revolution these still analog, uh, analog effects became digital, more or less, and what the digital technology does is just simulating what the analog technology does, basically. So that's it. Uh, so they, they model all these analog gadgets here and simulate the sound, basically. Although the signal is still analog, but it gets in, it gets analog digital converted, then magic happens and then it gets out. Again. Yeah, um, here you see the guitar was even further developed uh, to more or less synthesizers uh, with, with our phones, smartphones. So you see there are a couple of, there just two examples, um, how the guitar can look. I mean, that's not a guitar anymore, that just uses the shape of the guitar, but it's a synthesizer. Um, but that's how. Uh, it, goes further and how it can go further. And uh, yeah, I have a short video to show you. Uh, let me just check. video to show you uh, some more or less novel effects how to play guitar in a not usual way, way with more or less novel technology.
play in some very, like, not very sophisticated way, but yeah, that's uh, the first the first step here uh, as well to connect the guitar or the guitarist instrument to someone else than the musician who plays the guitar. Which brings me to the next step. How does interaction happen with Digital music instruments. Well, the next question. And to bring it, um, put it simple, it happens with the instrument, with other musicians, and the audience. So I, as a guitar player, interact with the instrument, of course I play it. I interact with other musicians when I play with others, and with the audience when I have an audience. So that's so, to put it simple. The interaction. So we have the interaction with the instrument. So you have a musician and you have an instrument and there's some sort of interaction. And this some sort of interaction, those of you who attended the HCI course, maybe here or somewhere else, uh, heard about this principle already. Interaction always uh, means some sort of action and feedback. That is, and that happens with the Guitar with the instrument as well. There is some sort of action from the musician, and the musician gets feedback from the device, which in the case of the instrument is any form of body gesture, and the feedback is either auditory, visual, tactile, kinesthetic. Yeah? When you manipulate the guitar in some way, you play it, you get some sound back, but you also see the vibrating string you feel the string vibrating, especially when you touch it, of course, uh, and you can manipulate it, or like the guitar itself manipulates your body as well through certain movement of the strings or knobs or whatever. So that's the interaction between musician and uh, instrument. Interaction with other musicians, obvious, you have the interaction between the musicians and then the interaction happens between the two humans. Again, this stays the same and of course the same happens between uh, the two musicians. They can I don't know, shout to each other or talk to each other while playing, they see each other while playing, they could yeah, I don't know, touch uh, whatever uh, each other uh, or yeah, move together on stage towards whatever. You know, I think you get the idea what interaction between musicians means. And finally, the audience. Uh, interaction between instrument and musician still stays the same, but here is now an audience. What happens here? You have feedback to the audience for both, actually. You have feedback the musician gives them on a human level, I would say. And then the instrument gives feedback to them as well. So the feedback of the musician can be audible, it can be tangible, throwing things into the audience. Uh, it can be visible, dancing, whatever, jumping around. And the uh, feedback of the guitar, the instrument, is audio. Well, audible. Of course, it's also visible and. Uh, when it's a very bass-focused uh, music style, then it's also tactile, so yeah, it could be more tangible. And then there is feedback 
from the audience back to the musician, which could be tangible again, audible and visible, like dancing, throwing things on stage, uh, or just the obvious way, uh, clapping and shouting to appreciate the performance or not. And then there's a the question, what happens on this side, like the participation from the audience to the instrument, which is less obvious than all the other channels we just had. Um, we just saw the video. There is a way, because in that one video the musician uh, took the guitar in the front row and they could somehow play. I mean, they more or less touched it, uh, but they, yeah, they played it, let's say. So that is...